The see the honey wheat cereal is good too though. It's good. Yeah. It's just it's very sweet. Yeah. Well, it's, it's like honey. Yeah. Hey there. Oh, ow, that was loud. Hey there. Hi there. Ho there. My name is Michael. I'm a former bartender from the Cal Lizzie, Michigan area. And today we are on day nine of our 25 drinks of Christmas. I'm shooting these in five episode batches. So if that sounded a little bit more fast and loose than normal, it's because I've had three drinks so far. And now we're moving on to number four. You only drank all three of them. Like, all of them. It doesn't matter. <laughs> With me, that doesn't matter. True. I'm, I am a fucking lightweight, man. <laughs> it's bad. So last episode we did a drink called The Nice List, and that is one of a uh, two drink pair. Um, that I've come up with. The next one is called the Naughty List, and it is a variation on a daiquiri. Compared to the Nice List, it's significantly more approachable with way more um, readily available flavors, I would suggest. Um, so let's go ahead and get started on making one right now. Sorry, this has literally nothing to do with anything, but Splash Mountain is closing in January so that they can do the Princess and the Frog curve. Finally? Yes. Oh, fuck yeah, nice. <laughs> Sorry, this has like nothing to nope, do with No, I don't, I don't care, it doesn't matter. Cause that's, that's fucking awesome news. I, I remember when they first announced they were gonna do that eventually, and a bunch of racists came out of the woodwork like, ugh, it's yeah, so bad. From my childhood. I'm, still I'm not surprised they're still bad, but nobody's listening to them anymore. But it's just like, ugh, why would you get rid of this ride from my childhood? I'm like, have you ever seen this movie? No, you haven't, because it never went, it never went into a market release in America, because it was horribly racist. I know we've only watched like the very basic like preliminary stuff, where it was just an anomalous like SCP alligator floating around a water ride track. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm it looked sure. promising. Anyway, the naughty list. Sorry. Right, to start off preparing a naughty list, you have to uh, take a coupe style glass and rim it with uh, some red sugar. Just kind of like the naughty list, but opposite color. There you go, you have a half rim on a uh, coupe style glass. You can leave it a little bit less than half because there is a fruit garnish that goes on here as well. but. We can set that aside and get started on our cocktail now. After you clean the sticky shit off your hands, because there's no faster way to make everything in your fucking house sticky than a sugar rim. <laughs> so this is a daiquiri variation, which means that it is a shaken cocktail. It's going to use everything you see in front of you here. Uh, we're gonna use a white rum. You're also going to need uh, an ounce of either cranberry or pomegranate juice, as I've used in a couple episodes now. This is a half and half combination of both. You'll eventually need uh, some cocktail uh, cherries for garnish, some lime juice, and then this little bottle right here. What's in this bottle is a special simple syrup called a royal syrup, and one that has also had hibiscus uh, steeped into it. What is a royal syrup? A royal syrup is a simple syrup that swaps the water component for uh, usually flat uh, sparkling wine of some kind, so like a flat uh, champagne or a flat Prosecco. What that does is, uh, first of all, allow you to use up a bunch of old Prosecco that has gone flat and nobody is going to drink. Um, but also introduces some very light, tart, crisp, I would say like very crisp berry-like flavors. And to an extent, not that it literally does, but sort of in an experiential way, maintains the carbonation of a champagne, that kind of very crisp, almost pokey, very, very intense carbonation. In a way, on the flavor palette of this, that is maintained, which is very impressive. This one in particular has been steeped with some hibiscus tea. Um, in this particular case, I used uh, FGO Organic Hibiscus Flower Tea. Just like any other simple syrup, you're gonna take two cups of uh, sugar and then dissolve that into a cup of uh, flat, or honestly, if you have a fresh bottle of Prosecco, like a small one, um, you can just do that. It's fine, it'll go flat as you cook it anyway. I got that to dissolve and then brought it up to a low simmer uh, and then threw in a third of a cup of hibiscus leaf. And then I just kind of stirred that let it sit, let it steep, and taste it every so often until I got a combination of the initial impact of the Prosecco and uh, hibiscus flower in here. Anyway, let's put the drink together. <laughs> I'm gonna start with three quarters of an ounce of this uh, hibiscus royal syrup. You can go up to an ounce here um, if you wanted to make it a little bit sweeter, but it doesn't really need it. And I think what this drink has going for it is a certain amount of tartness uh, in the flavor that comes from both the lime and the juice we're gonna use. Uh, next up, we're going to do uh, an ounce of lime juice. I think I said this a couple of times, but once you get used to the size of your uh, the fruit in your area and how much juice it produces, you can pretty much tell how much you're going to get out of a single piece of that fruit. In this case, for me, it's about a single one. Next up, the next addition we're going to make is uh, some cranberry or pomegranate juice. Um, like I've used a couple of times now, like I said earlier, this is the uh, 
half and half of cranberry pomegranate. As always, we're gonna add some ice to this, give it a shake, and then get ready to serve. This ice froze in really weird shapes. It doesn't wanna break. It's got like curves to it and shit. It's a good thing this movie is an infold. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa! There's ice flying at the screen. Quick, okay, quick tangent. I fucking hate 3D movies. <laughs> Every 3D movie I've ever watched has sacrificed the quality of the visual effects on screen and the way that they're executed for the sake of displaying them in a way that exemplifies the movie was made in 3D. Uh, there's a 3D cut of uh, the sequel to 300, the movie about the 300 Roman Spartans that fight off the Persian army. It's about like the fall of Troy or something. Um, but there's a bunch of scenes in that movie where if you're watching it into standard high definition, there's like weird shit coming, like a spear or something, or some blood coming up on the screen. And you're like, oh, they made this movie because they released it in 3D. So all of these visual effects are meant to be viewed that way. And now the regular movie sucks as a, as a result. <laughs> That's a movie that like doesn't need to be in 3D. It's not necessary. 100% correct. Look. Now 3D rides. Those are fun. <laughs> the Spider-Man ride Spider at Universal. Is so fun. The fucking best ride at that at that fucking Literally, park. Honestly, yes. And I, that's saying something because the Harry Potter rides are really good. Oh, oh god damn it! <laughs> Every time we get to something good, <laughs> let me do some magic and bring this back with a clap. Hey, how's it going? Shake your cocktail to completion. You had to double strain your cocktail into your clap. Sorry, I can talk about. Roller no, no, I get it, they're fun. So once we got the cocktail in there, we're gonna do one last thing to garnish it. Um, we're going to add uh, a cherry. Cherry wedge? Fuck me. A lime wedge. Like cherry. <laughs> to the edge here. And then a couple of cocktail cherries alongside that. This is a naughty list. Let's go ahead and give it a sip. Every time I take the first sip of this cocktail, I fall in love with it again. Because <laughs> this is such an interesting combination of flavors. You get berry from the cranberry pomegranate combo in contrast with sharp tart lime. And at the same time, those two things are enhanced and sort of made approachable and rounded by this syrup that has its own element of both of those things. You're basically taking all of the base flavors you would find in a berry flavored daiquiri and putting them to the second power. You're taking it and giving them both this underlying mainline flavor that makes the whole experience more enjoyable. No matter how many times I've made this, because I've made this for myself upwards of four or five times now, I love it every single time. And I will say, it's really good with the rum. You still get some of that rum flavor in there. It doesn't taste like cheap alcohol though. It's got this kind of smoothness to it, the way that a lot of Cuban rums do. But simultaneously, I have also tried this with gin in the past and it is a solid substitute. It gives more botanical notes to the, the back end of it. It's a little bit less smooth, but a little bit more alive and lively. Um, be really, really good if you were looking to replace it with um, gin, if that was your preferred spirit. This cocktail is yours, Tia. Okay. <laughs> because I am feeling this already, but I want you to have a sip of it anyway. And you just let me know what you think. Yeah, that's good. I like it? Mm -hmm. Nice. Well, I no longer have a cocktail to pose with for the end of this episode, but hopefully you guys enjoyed it. That was a naughty list of very fun and just complex, interesting riff on a daiquiri with very approachable flavors. If you guys enjoyed this episode, click that like button down below and subscribe to catch the next episode coming up at the exact same time tomorrow. Can you believe that? We've been doing this nine days and they're happening at the exact same time, isn't that wild? It's almost like it's a series. Uh, the recipe for this cocktail is in the description as always. I'm gonna start saying that every single time just so that if people know. Um, as, well, as well as that uh, hibiscus royal syrup recipe down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I am going to clean up the ridiculous amount of ice shards that are present here. Uh, and I will see you next time. Have a good day. Bye.